this is that many students struggle to learn. We covered many topics on soft skills, teaching methodology and research in our previous slot of this STTP. Learning is an ongoing process and learning is many times referred to as teaching in higher education. But learning is much deeper than memorizing and information recall deep and long lasting learning. Involves understanding, relating ideas and making connections between prior and new knowledge. Independent and critical thinking and ability to transform knowledge into new and different contexts. Teaching, learn, uh, training and other structures. Learning opportunity are activities that one person does to another while uh, learning is something we can only do it for ourselves. The STTP uh, okay. uh, be the change teaching learning process is about the learning. Hope you all enjoy, will enjoy, interact, and make use of knowledge and of the knowledgeable people. Now I would like to invite. Uh, Dr. Uh, A. Peer yeah, Mohammed, yeah, Vice Chancellor B. S. Abdul Rahman, recent Institute of Science and Technology, to give his presidential speech. Uh, uh, so, uh, sir, uh, uh, Registrar, sir, is here. So, can we start with inaugural speech, sir? Sorry, sir. Hmm? Sir, Registrar, sir, has joined us. Okay. So first, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, I would like to invite our uh, uh, registrar, uh, Dr. A. Azad of uh, B.S. Abdul Rahman Crescent Institute of Technology to give an inaugural speech. So, there is some background noise actually. You can uh, yes, it. sir. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Professor. Good morning to all of you. Uh, morning, all of you. Uh, am I audible? Yes, sir, you are audible. Uh, uh, Okay, uh, uh, respected Vice Chancellor of our University, Professor A. Pirman, respected Director uh, HR uh, of our uh, University, teaching staff, deans, HODs, and uh, director, participants, participants from our uh, University and other universities. A uh, very good morning to all of you. Um, teaching is a passion for many of you. Many of you would have joined the profession, uh, you know, to become good teachers. Uh, it is a kind of, you know, attitude. Many people enjoy it. Uh, long time before when People joined as teachers. They were told that uh, they are like the leaders. So people, uh, you know, ladder helps people to go up. So uh, we are doing a tremendous work for the upliftment of the society. India has a huge uh, university system. Uh, more than 800 universities are there. Um, there are 40,000. Uh, big institutions are there, and uh, there is a huge cadre of teachers. The, the number of uh, educational institutions has increased in the past two decades tremendously. As a result, a large number of people have joined the teaching profession. However, uh, as today's you know theme says, how do you manage your quality? How do you keep up your pace with the improvement in the knowledge, especially in engineering, technology, uh, and various research fields? Today, a teacher is not only a teacher, they have to do research also. So they have to manage both. On one side, they are teaching. On the other side, they have to do research. Research is, uh, again, you know, uh, requires a lot of time. You know, you have to do research, you get funds publications and all so uh, on the other side uh, due to the information technology internet and other facilities students are also becoming very knowledgeable uh, whatever the teacher teaches today if they go to the net they get uh, 100 times more information uh, on the net so the teachers have to keep ahead of the result what you taught uh, the last year you may have to add 
this year for the next batch. When it comes to the quality, there are so many things involved in that. One is what you are teaching, then how you are teaching. In uh, during many of your interaction, you would have understood that you must be constant learners. To learn, you may use the, all the resources. Apart from that, uh, I will encourage our teachers to attend very good conferences, seminars, so that you know you are, uh, you know, uh, well informed about what is the latest trends in your area. Teaching is not only teaching your subject, it is also to motivate the students to learn. Uh, in any class, there will be a section of students who are dull or less motivated. So you have to motivate uh, a lot of students. So motivation is part of your teaching. Teaching the morale is also part of your teaching. Uh, accepting their younger age, you know, uh, people with young age, uh, some will be uh, very happy, uh, some may do some mischief and all that. However, you must pardon them because that is a, you must understand that that is a developing age, uh, especially the age between 16 and 22. It is a age where they ask a lot of questions. So you say you don't stand there, they will ask why we should not stand there. You don't do this, they will ask why we can't do that. Uh, that is how the nature works. So, being a teacher is not only understanding the subject, it is also to understand the student. So, uh, you may have to do multitasking uh, during the teaching. And for that, you have to organize the day, organize your semester, organize the year, even organize a career by uh, understanding what are the current requirements. Apart from that, have mentors, you know, senior professors who are interested in you, uh, who are successful. You must have successful professors, kind professors as your mentors. Uh, they can save you a lot of time and energy and they can guide you properly. So uh, with this, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I, uh, there was a, uh, as usual, you know, internet problem. So I joined at the last minute. However, uh, it is, uh, I, I have gone through the, this uh, training program, uh, all the materials on the training program, you will have very good deliberations. To this. Uh, thank you, Ramesh. Thank you, sir, for your inspiring words. Thank you. Uh, now I would like to invite our Vice Chancellor, Dr. A. P. Mohammed, for uh, his presidential uh, speech. So. Thank you. Good morning, all of you. Registrar Professor Azad. Our director HR, Dr. Nikat M. Hamza, the dean's directors, HODs, the participants from our country and from abroad, and also the, the speakers. It gives me immense pleasure to participate in the inauguration of the STTP slot two on Be the Change Teaching Learning Process, organized by our HR division. At the outset, I, I congratulate uh, Director HR and his team for organizing uh, this kind of pro programs for the benefit of our uh, teacher. So this is uh, the second in the series, one more uh, slot is also remaining. So the topic is uh, well chosen, it is very apt, uh, be the change. Actually, the world is changing uh, very fast. So we have to be more adaptive, we have to be agile, what's going on around us. As told by our uh, registrar, uh, we have to learn for uh, tomorrow, not for today. Every day is different. So we have to seek for uh, continuous uh, improvement. That's more important. Every day we have to do something better than what we did yesterday. So the role of teacher is uh, very, very important. It's not uh, you know, the same as uh, we were teachers some 30 years back, actually. Here we have to choose uh, and adapt new pedagogies, new rubrics, and our education become outcome based. So we should know about the program educational objectives and the outcomes and see that the outcomes are attained. That's more important things. 
So we have to constantly update our uh, curricula and celebi and our teaching methodologies. So this kind of program helps us actually to know what's going around us. So because the speakers are uh, uh, experts in their own field of specialization, and uh, our teachers uh, can come to know about um, many new people, of course, many new uh, subjects. So they have to constantly update and upskill. Uh, unless uh, we upskill, update ourselves, uh, we cannot uh, motivate uh, our students. Uh, motivating and inspiring is more important. So we should have thorough knowledge in the subject what we teach. We should be authority in our subject. We cannot afford to make any mistakes in our classes actually. So we have to be thorough, correct, complete in each and every aspect. So this kind of um, a pro program uh, will help us uh, uh, improving, correcting, honing our knowledge on the subjects what we are teaching. Of course, uh, not only we should teach, uh, uh, we should be very creative and collaborative also. Now, uh, reading the books and teaching in the classroom itself is not sufficient. We have to be creative, we have to be collaborative, we have to do a lot of research. And, and the research should not stop in the uh, classroom or in the lab. It should be uh, taken uh, uh, to the uh, incubation uh, um, uh, centers and we should see the product. And uh, Regis are told that the teachers uh, are uh, like and as a leader that uh, we allow others to grow. It's not like that. The teachers now can grow. Now teachers can start their own companies. Actually, the provision is there now. The government has made it possible. We can be a founder, co-founder of a company. So the teacher can grow. So there are a lo lot of uh, opportunities available. So we have to make use of the opportunities. So we have to keep uh, in pace with the, what are the changes taking place uh, around us. Of course, uh, learning is not a single time affair. It is a continuous process. While the students are learning, the teachers should learn. And uh, of course, uh, we also should learn. We continuously we will learn and uh, see that our students are empowered well. And when they come out uh, from their um, program, they are uh, more complete in all aspects, actually not only in a theories, but also in practice. So that requires a continuous uh, industrial interaction. Our teachers uh, should uh, uh, interact with the industries uh, continuously and uh, our students also should find uh, solutions for the problems happening in the industry, not only solving the problems in the textbook. So what's happening in real time? Isn't it they should find a solution? We have to prepare the students uh, in that way. So I um, again congratulate uh, for the HR and his team for arranging this kind of program and uh, all the five or six days uh, the participants will enjoy the lectures because uh, they have drawn a um, um, lot of good people around the world and you will enjoy you will get enlightened and uh, a lot of benefit for all the teachers i also would uh, like to listen to the classroom lectures uh, we will be also benefited and uh, finally i wish the program a grand success thank you all Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Before starting with our first session, I would like to uh, introduce our eminent personalities of our BS Abdul Rahman Crescent Institute and the speakers. Sir, BC, sir, with your permission, shall we start, sir? Yes, please. B.S. Abdur Rahman Crescent Institute of Science and Technology is a renowned quality leadership institution located at the greenest spot of Chennai near Tambaram. Through our long history of 36 years of excellence, the institution has offered access to a wide range of academic opportunities. With 49 programs, grouped under 12 different schools, 29 undergraduate programs, 20 postgraduate programs, and Ph.D., in all the departments, this institution is a rising stalwart in higher education with promising quality, quality, and placement. 
we welcome students from all countries and our educational programs are designed to equip the learners with virtual knowledge that helps them to achieve what they want to be and go where they want to go in the ladder of success. This institution is an intellectual destination that challenges conventional thinking and stimulates passion to redefine learning. The distinctive teaching at this institution makes the students and scholars to compete with themselves and each other. Apart from providing top-notch education, our green campus and well-planned student life are solely dedicated to making students utilize the ambience to the fullest. Through our wide array of educational programs and unique clubs to foster student development activities, we provide opportunities and experiences that build community, help you grow personally and professionally, and create a place that you can call home now and throughout your life. An uncommon man of deep conviction and perseverance, his vision runs crescent today for the benefit of the teachers, staffs, students, alumni and the society. Destiny is not a matter of chance, but of choice. The man who changed his destiny hailed from a middle-class family at Kilkarai, Ramanathpuram district, Tamil Nadu, reaching the pinnacle of success by his ultimate choice of perseverance and elegance. Dr. Buhari Sayyid Abdul Rahman, a well-known personality in the field of education, economy and industry and was also a philanthropist par excellence. He was an ardent lover of the welfare of society who believed that the world is for the winner when business is not just about self but also about society. Dr. Abdul Rahman felt education to be the key to solve socio-economic problems of the society. Hence he founded a number of educational institutions through which a multitude of students have been benefited. Amidst his numerous achievements as an entrepreneur and educationist, problem let me uh, try it again
Dr. A. P. Muhammad was appointed as Pro Vice Chancellor of B. S. Abdul Rahman Crescent Institute of Science and Technology on 20th of January. 2020 and he has become the vice chancellor of the institute on 31st of December 2020 he started his career as lecturer in textile technology AC college technology Anna University Chennai in 1986 and worked as assistant professor from 1992 to 2000 he became professor of textile technology in July 2000 and retired in January 2018 he received his BTech in Textile Technology in 1980 from University of Madras, M.Tech. In Textile Engineering in 1983 from IIT, Delhi. He completed his Ph.D. in 1992 in Anna University. He has 31 years of teaching and research experience in Anna University. He held many administrative positions in Anna University like Chairman, Faculty of Technology Director, Planning, and Development, Additional Controller of Examinations Director, Center for Faculty Development, Head of the Textile Department Director, Center for Affiliation of Institutions, and Controller of Examinations, Anna University of Technology, Chennai. Before joining Anna University, he worked in the South India Textile Research Association, Sitra, Koyambatur Lakshmi Machine Works Limited. Koyambatur as RF Limited, Chennai. Dr. A. Azad, Registrar B.S. Abdur Rahman Crescent Institute of Science and Technology, worked as a professor in the Department of Manufacturing Engineering. He was also the Director, Center for International Affairs and earlier the Deputy Director, Center for Research, Anna University. His doctoral thesis was in the area of total quality management. He facilitated student and staff exchanges with foreign universities. He held many awareness programs on studies abroad, special programs for researchers, foreign language programs, technical talks, international conferences with partner universities, international summer school. He published many research papers in national and international journals and book chapters. He has expertise in total quality management and is a well-known speaker on various topics of TQM. Dr. N. Raja Hussain, Deputy Registrar, B.S. Abdul Rahman Crescent Institute of Science and Technology. He holds 36 years of experience in academia. He did his MCom from Madurai Kamraj University, MBA from Madras University and PhD from Dr. Ambedkar University, Agra. Let us know more about our eminent speakers. Dr. A. P. Muhammad Born into an accomplished business family of par excellence that ran into multiple industries, Dr. Shankar Goenka left his family business and set up Wow Factors India Private Limited in 2006 to nourish his passion for building and refining human capital to help individuals and organizations for achieving super success. INCC cadet, theater, and stage artist, play synthesizer, hockey player, an avid researcher, inquisitive learner and a competent professional who believes in inclusive growth and sustenance of mankind. Dr. Shine Ka's exploration led him to specializing in whole brain thinking under the able guidance of Dr. Kovas Neetling which formed the center pillar of all his training programs for his divergent audience. Strong believer of the mentor-mentee relationship had great mentors in life and is very thankful. Travels across the globe on invitations from national and international bodies for speaking and training assignments through his offices in India and overseas and is the recipient of a string of prestigious awards from India and abroad in creative thinking, transformational leadership, capacity building, woman leadership, education, social work, and happiness. He has facilitated more than 5 lakh people and his clientele which include a notion of school children from 300 plus schools, universities from India and overseas, professionals, academicians, CEOs, judges, bureaucrats, business owners from more than 150 corporations, PSUs, ministries, NGOs, trained at NBI registered, South Africa, International Finance Corporation. World Bank, 
All India Management Association, AIMA, and many more training programs. Debra Spring Laurel has been a workplace learning and performance improvement consultant for over 30 years. The president of Laurel and Associates, Limited, a certified woman-owned small business, Debra is internationally recognized as a quality trainer of trainers and a specialist in curriculum design. She consulted with J.J. Strossmayer University in Osijek, Croatia to design the first Eastern European participant-based master's degree program in entrepreneurship. Her work has taken her to South Africa for UNIDO, Jordan, Kenya, Nigeria and Zambia for USAID, Jordan for Mercy Corps, and Dubai, UAE for Aikba. She's published in the 2004 to 2013 FIFA annuals. The Leadership Challenge Activities Book and 101 More Ways to Make Training Active. She authored two info lines, Conducting a Classroom Learning Audit and Jumpstart Your Learning Objectives. Deborah publishes a free weekly e-zine, Laurel Learning Tips. Over 830 tips can be found at http colon slash slash laurelandassociates.com slash blog. She has her master's degree from the University of Wisconsin-Madison, USA. CEO, Chief Facilitator and Executive Coach, Prime Meridian Consulting India Private Limited has a work experience of 35 years and wide experience in the domain of leadership and organizational transformation. In corporate life, he has worked in leadership positions in both Indian and multinational organizations and in his last designation was a senior vice president in a Tata Group majority stake company. He has been instrumental in the areas of business growth, managing transitions and establishing and managing new business streams. Pawan specializes and has conducted leadership and organizational development initiatives for leaders from organizations such as IBM, Capgemini, J.P. Morgan, PwC, St. Goban, and other big companies. He has been a guest speaker slash keynote speaker in senior leadership retreats and national and international seminars. He is a certified Marshall Goldsmith facilitator and coach, master faculty on Robin Sharma's Lead Without a Title System Master Faculty of Leadership, Global on Building Emotional Intelligence and Ethical Leadership. Faculty of Collective Leadership Institute, Berlin for Navigating Change in Complex Multi-Actor Settings, Stakeholder Collaboration and Collaborative Execution Excellence in Organizations, Consultant for Conducting the Online Game-Based Leadership Development Simulation, Serious Game, for Decision Makers on Flow Promoting Leadership, developed by Professor Mihai Csikszent Mihai John Maxwell Team Coach, Speaker, and Teacher. He has done his B.Tech, Telecom and Electronics, Masters in Strategy from Madras University and Executive P.G. from XLRI, Jamshedpur. He is the only leadership facilitator and coach from India who was selected to share his leadership transformation experiences in a Hollywood documentary, tentatively titled, The Life and Legacy of Marshall Goldsmith due for release in mid-2020. Mano Jongkar is Chief Consultant. With over 25 years of experience in the domain of training, consulting and organizational development in India and USA, he has empowered the lives of more than 30,000 plus people and 200 plus trainers. Manoj has done a doctorate in organizational development and is a mechanical engineer who also holds postgraduate diplomas in general management, human resources, marketing, and finance. At Me Management Innovations, Manoj has been spearheading the introduction of the leading edge, globally renowned technologies and methodologies that cause human development, organization transformation and big social impact. He has 20 years experience in conducting ontology-based transformation workshops, individual coaching and group coaching. With the depth of experience as a master trainer and consultant, Manoj has been the head of consulting at NISPA to managing national and international collaborations for the company. Additionally, he also ensured training delivery, quality and management at a national level. Prior to his association with NISPA, Manoj was working with the Landmark Education as a forum leader, 
global faculty, where he has trained approximately 15,000 people in India and the USA. He is a key member of the National Training and Certifying Council of the Seminar Leaders of India. He has coached trainers across India and also some trainers in US, Hong Kong, Singapore, Bangkok, etc. Dr. Nikhil Gokhale is founder of company named Vidionium and marketing director, consulting, at Tiny Twig Australia. He obtained his master's degree from the University of Pune, India, and moved to the United States to pursue his PhD in chemistry at the University of Illinois at Chicago. He then joined the U.S. National Institutes of Health, NIH, as a visiting fellow. After conducting biomedical research at the NIH and at the University of Massachusetts Medical School, Dr. Gokhale returned to India to pursue work in academia and industry. He has successfully inspired, trained, and managed a team at Crimson Interactive, a renowned multinational communications firm with offices based in India, US, Japan, China, South Korea, Taiwan, Augmented Inago Academy's International Outreach, Europe, Asia, Global, received recognition from Crimson Interactive for being an ace innovator, invited Nobel laureate Dr. Kurt Wootrich for a training workshop in Mumbai and obtained corporate sponsorship from Biocon, India's largest biopharmaceutical company, for the Indo-US Nobel laureate workshop, St. Xavier's College, Mumbai served as the Chief Conference Coordinator for ICSHI 2017 and ICA 2016, successfully invited Nobel Laureate Dr. Alan J. Heger and experts from MIT, USA as keynote speakers and experts from Stanford University IIT Mumbai as keynote speakers for ICA 2016. He received a graduate teaching assistantship, 18,000 US dollars per year, from the University of Illinois at Chicago. August 2002 August 2008 He was recognized as a resource person by the University Grants Commissions in Flibonet Center Gujarat India cited and recommended by the prestigious faculty of 1000 Prime 2006 He has 250 plus citation in Google Scholar He also cited by articles published in Nature Chemical Biology Structure Angivandate Chemi and by Dr. Solomon Snyder, Lashkar Award winner, USA. Dr. Rendraja Hussain, Deputy Registrar, B.S. Abdurrahman Crescent Institute of Science and Technology. Dr. Mukesh J. Waria received the MSc in Physics in 2003 from Indian Institute of Technology Roorkee and MTech in Laser Technology in 2006 from Deviya Hilya Vishwavidyalaya and Odd. He received his D. SC in physics from Kyoto University in 2010. From 2010 to 2011, he worked as a specially appointed researcher in the Renovation Center of Instruments for Science Education and Technology, Osaka University. Later from 2011 to 2012 he worked as an assistant professor in the Institute of Technology and Science, the University of Tokushima, Tokushima, Japan. He was a visiting scientist from 2015 to 2016 at Korea Atomic Energy Research Institute, Daejeon, South Korea. Currently he is working as a scientist at CSIR National Physical Laboratory, New Delhi from 2012. He is a recipient of Mon Bukagak Show Fellowship Japan, 2006, JSPS Kukini, 2011, and Korean Research Fellowship, 2015 to 2017. His research interest includes generation of high-powered THZ bulbs, THZ spectroscopy, THZ imaging, and THZ frequency metrology. Dr. Patar Basak, with 24 years of academic and industry experience, gold medalist in MBA in 1996 and doctorate in management, graduated in commerce from KMV. Jalanda and has been conferred as accredited management teacher by All India Management Association in 2008. Has served as faculty and in academic administrative positions in various management schools in Hyderabad and Kolkata, School of Retail Management, Symbiosis University, in or Indian Institute of Health Management Research University, Jigar, and ITM Vocational University, Barodara.
has been a member and chairperson of various committees, presently working as professor with Tishk International University, Kurdistan region of Iraq in Faculty of Administrative Sciences and Economics. Her work experience has affirmed interest in training, research and consulting in accreditation, DPR, entrepreneurship, general management, sales and marketing and online training in PSUs, pharmaceutical and healthcare sectors. Imparted training since her professional engagement with ESCI, Hyderabad to various organizations. C. Hamel Kafafi has a wide industry and consultancy experience in the medical, manufacturing and service industry besides being an academic for the past 23 years. C. Hamel is running her own business Arrows Research Consultancy Limited, providing consultancy work for both corporate organizations and educational institutions since June 2014. Seaham holds a PhD from the University of Waikato, New Zealand, a Master's in Adult Literacy and Numeracy Education from Auckland University of Technology, a Master's of Public Administration from the American University in Cairo and Bachelor's of Art in English Literature with Honours from R. E. Shams University, Cairo, Egypt. Seaham has over 100 publications in journal articles, book chapters and conference proceedings besides being on the editorial boards for various national and international journals, on board of examiners and award committees. Dr. Penan Chinnaswamy obtained his master's degree in physics from Wesleyan University, Connecticut, U.S., followed by a doctoral degree, with focus on hydrology, from Missouri University, U.S., after his research fellow position with Ashoka Trust for Research in Ecology and the Environment, ATRE, he joined the International Water Management Institute, IWMI as a researcher, geohydrology and remote sensing, and was stationed in Nepal and Indian offices, where he focused on climate change impacts on underdeveloped and developing nations. He then joined Nanyang Technological University, Singapore, as a senior researcher developing real-time flood predicting models for Singapore. He is currently an assistant professor with Indian Institute of Technology, Bombay, India, under the Center for Technology Alternatives for Rural Areas, HTRA, department, where his work primarily focuses on natural resources assessment, monitoring and management in rural regions. He is the founding director of the Rural Data Research and Analysis, RUDRA, lab, which is the first big data lab for rural regions, housed in an academic institution in India. He is also an associate faculty with the Interdisciplinary Climate Program and Policy Study Center in IIT Bombay. Penan is also a visiting professor with University of Oulu, Finland. Over the past decade, Penan has experience working in NGOs, national and regional government agencies and academic institutions, focusing on sustainable surface and groundwater management plans, climate change impacts, large data analysis and hydrological simulation models. His work has been recognized in many internationally peer-reviewed journals, policy briefs and government reports, for example EPA, NEA Nepal, World Bank, Asian Development Bank and are being used to formulate scientifically validated best management plans. Dr. Ferdos Sharoff is Director Professor, CRKIMR, University of Mumbai, and Sir M. Vishweshwarya Institute of Management Studies and Research SVIMSR. He is Board of Director in the Zoroastrian Cooperative Bank Limited, Mumbai, Independent Director, LICHFL Care Homes Limited. Lions Clubs International, Lion Club of Bombay Kafferade, Institute of Clinical Legal Education and Research, ICLER, National Vice President, Civil Rights Protection Cell, CRPC, Nagpur. He is also an actor in Bollywood movies. He acted in films, scientist role in Mission Mingal, Body Double with Bowman Irani, Medlife Advertisement, Kim Chonam Keen and acted with Bowman Irani in movie Ferrari Ki Sawari, Andhatan. Navy Admiral role in advertisement, Naiga directed by Konkana Sen, Commissioner of Police role in movie Darbar, press reporter role in Parsi drama Bawaji Kartaima Yega. He is recipient of World Excellence Icon Award 2020, upcoming Best Bollywood Actor in recognition of playing multi-talented roles in Bollywood movies, advertisements and social cause for cancer awareness initiatives from Speak India Speak, 
एस के फिल्म एंड प्रोडक्शन हाउस शॉर्ट फिल्म वेब सीरीज डॉक्यूमेंट्री ही इज ऑल्सो रिसिपियंट ऑफ बेस्ट एक्टर अवार्ड एट थर्ड रियल एस्टेट एंड कंस्ट्रक्शन लीडरशिप अवार्ड ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी He received Special Educator Award of Recognition from Higher Education Forum (HEF) on the 10th Teachers Day event at Indian School of Design and Innovation (ISDI). Appointed on Senate member of the Pune University by His Excellency Shri Keshav Kurnarayan, Governor of Maharashtra and Chancellor of the Universities of Maharashtra, nominally under Section 25-2S of the Maharashtra Universities Act, 1994. for a term as envisaged under section 42 of the said act effective from 31st of December 2010 till 31st December 2015 recipient of outstanding teacher award and recognition of distinguished services rendered in the field of education slash promotion of social and religious activities from lions clubs international on occasion of teachers day 5th of September 2003 2010 2012 recipient of award for dedicated services in education 2005 in the sphere of meritorious and humanitarian services rendered to the society and mankind dr rajas is assistant professor iit dhanbad Doctor of Doctor of Zilur Rahman is head Department of Commerce has more than 10 years of experience in teaching and industries in India and abroad he has hands on experience in ERP implementation He has expertise in accounts, finance and financial data analytics, share market capital and cryptocurrency. He has published many papers in national and international journal, attended and organized many national and international conferences. Because of expertise in IT, he was able to reduce the paperwork and duplication of work through various apps available and self made which made his department functioning smooth even during lockdown he also worked as content head in gap education limited he did graduation master and doctorate in commerce from patna university and mba from vinayaka mission university he also holds advanced diploma in software engineering from niit patna Dr Nikhat M Hamsa Director HR and Faculty Training Development at PS Abdur Rahman Crescent Institute of Science and Technology Chennai She hold 26 years of experience of which 15 years of experience in leadership role with different industries of repute like drip irrigation automobile fabrication IT and 11 years in education She did her MBA from North Maharashtra University, Dulgarh, Maharashtra and PhD from RK University, Rajkot, Gujarat. She has authored the book Corporate Sweet and Salt available on Kindle and paperback on poti.com. She is also recipient of Sushma Swaraj Sri Shakti Award. we'll start with our first session uh, cm ma'am uh, hello cm ma'am yeah can you hear me ma'am uh, ma'am you are on mute you are on mute yes 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 yeah. i can hear you yeah yeah yes, welcome ma'am and uh, thank you for having patience uh, we started bit late but you can uh, uh, take the extra time cm ma'am will be giving lecture on flipped classroom inquiry based learning and next uh, dictionary uh, learning ma'am it's over to you 
I am I'm I'm, I'm going to share my uh, uh, yeah you can ma'am yes I that's what I am doing right now as we speak okay can you see my uh, my screen yeah we can we are able to see that okay I'm trying okay here it is yeah. and you can hear me clearly right yeah, we are able to hear you clearly okay. and you, we are able to see your PPT also, ma'am. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I would like um, to start uh, uh, by thanking you uh, for uh, uh, Dr. Niket and uh, all the organizers and uh, uh, my fellow presenters and all the attendees. Uh, for um, having this opportunity to participate again and be the change teaching and learning process, uh, the complete transformation uh, slot two. And uh, this time I am going to be sharing with you about a flip uh, classroom. Um, so um, everybody has been talking about flip classroom and everybody is trying to uh, um, learn about the uh, new ways, um, stepping away from the traditional education. And the key thing here is that uh, as educators, um, we are aspiring to be the best uh, we can to help uh, in the transformation of our uh, processes, uh, of our students, uh, for their careers, and to be part of their learning journey and experience. And there is a lot of talk about the flipped classroom model. So I'm here today to share with you what is this concept that everybody's talking about and what does it mean? So in my presentation today, I will start first by talking about the concept of the flipped classroom, uh, the definition of it, uh, what does it stand for, and then comparing between uh, the traditional learning style and the flipped classroom. Uh, and of course, that will lead us as human beings, everybody um, wouldn't do anything except if they feel that they are going to win something out of it, they're going to benefit from it. Um, then I am going to share with you about uh, different steps, a guide, for us educators uh, that we can follow and that we can use in order to transform our classes into a flipped classroom and uh, also talk about the pillars uh, of a flipped learning. So there is two different terminologies here that we will be talking about, a flipped classroom and flipped learning. And then we need uh, as reflective practitioners um, and for the sake of continuous improvement to look at uh, ourselves, our practices, um, are we really following it? And what are the signs uh, that shows us, do we really do flipped classroom? Are we really doing flipped learning? And finally, do reflections. So um, let us first start by talking about what is the concept of flipped classroom? Um, the first, this concept and that terminology has been developed by Jonathan Bergerman and Aaron Sams. Uh, they were both uh, school chemistry teachers. And they uh, wrote this, uh, about this concept in their book, Flip Your Classroom. Reach every student in every class every day in 2012. So let us look at the uh, definition that uh, those uh, uh, teachers talked about. Uh, so they said that a uh, flipped classroom is actually a pedagogical approach. So what does it mean? Uh, you are actually uh, directing the instruction. You are moving it from a group learning space to an individual learning space. And then what is going to result is that um, the group space is transformed. It is transformed instead to a more dynamic, a more interactive learning environment. 
um, where we, as the educators, are going to guide the students. How are they going to become more engaged, um, uh, creatively, uh, in a more innovative way, and also to help them um, practice and apply the concepts that we're trying to teach them in whatever subject matter. Um, as educators, I'm sure that you will all uh, agree with me when we say that we learn by doing. Human beings, uh, adults, we learn by doing. So as educators, our aim is to provide our students with concepts that will help them outside the classroom, in the real life, uh, whether it's personal or professional, in order to be successful uh, in, um, in our profession. And uh, the concept of flipped classroom is going to help us to do that. So you will wonder, how is it going to happen? So let's see. Uh, if you are going to compare uh, between what used to happen in a traditional learning environment or approach versus uh, what we're talking about in um, a flipped uh, learning environment. So um, try to visualize with me the classroom where uh, the teacher we stand in the front and everybody, um, the students, are sitting in rows in front of us in that traditional classroom, that uh, layout, that traditional layout that we're all used to. And as uh, a teacher, yes, it's called a teacher at that uh, case, is concentrating on uh, the subject matter um, and standing there and giving the instruction, explaining and demonstrating a concept and giving uh, the definitions and telling the students what does it mean. And the students are sitting there uh, utilizing the listening uh, um, and writing and taking notes vehemently. Quickly, quickly, take notes, take notes. And they are looking at the teacher and following every utterance and every word and believing that that's it. They cannot question it. They cannot ask anything. And this is what the, that's, that's the trend. That is the traditional way. And at the end of the class, the teacher will give them a homework, uh, go and answer those questions or, or go and read this or, or go or a, whatever activity or exercise. So that was the traditional way. And if you uh, visualize that, it demonstrates to you the picture that um, the students are totally passive and everything is they need to do is just listen, take notes, uh, memorize and look at what the teacher is saying. Um, and we live for quite a while doing that. But right now, there is a total revolution and a change in the paradigm of teaching and learning. And one of those uh, changes of paradigms is the play, uh, flipped learning and flipped classroom. So in this case, the picture is totally different. Uh, what happens there is the teacher can assign things for the students and material to prepare before they come to the classroom. So this is uh, before uh, and during and then after. Uh, that we are going to be talking about. So before the students come to the class, they need to have the ownership that they have to participate. They are no more passive and only receiving information. They have to also do the role. So you, you may give them um, certain activities to uh, do it at home, to investigate the subject matter, go and research it online with their friend Google that everybody is using nowadays and cannot live without it. Not sure how did we survive without Google. And uh, or maybe you would have something for them to read uh, or uh, maybe you would have a video that you have prepared uh, for them to share and listen to it. Um, maybe um, jot down some questions or some things that they need to clarify. So all this 
happens before the students come to class. See? So you are um, involving them. You are engaging them. You are preparing them before the classroom. And then when they come to the classroom, you are actually um, giving yourself and themselves the chance to get to know each other uh, in a better way. So this is the chance that they would clarify things that they didn't understand uh, themselves. Um, also, you are giving them to have depth in their learning experience. And you're giving yourself also the chance to get to know them. So you are uh, giving them some discussions, um, some group activities. So before the class, they worked individually. But then when they came back to the class, this is the time that they work in groups again. And they connect, interact with each other. And as facilitators and as educators, we would help them solve any problem. And that will also help develop their critical thinking um, in that process. So that is flipped versus traditional learning. Uh, if we are going also to go deeper into this learning approach, uh, traditionally, uh, there was the lower level of learning was being utilized, remembering, understanding, um, that was happening in the classroom. And the students were left to do some activities and later on involved in higher level learning outside of the classroom. And that was following Bloom's taxonomy, which I'm going to share with you in a minute, the, um, the figure. But in a, a flip, classroom model, you are um, putting that pyramid upside down, as I will show you. The students can finish the lower level of cognitive work before they come to the classroom. And then they come to the class and then they can engage in the higher level of cognitive learning with their peers and with you as the educator and the facilitator. So let's have a look at uh, Bloom's uh, taxonomy. So the original um, model of Bloom's taxonomy, which is six uh, levels, that was uh, in, it was nouns, and it was created in 1956, as you can see. So if we are going to start uh, from the bottom of the pyramid, and that's how Bloom uh, developed it, um, you're going to see that uh, this is the lower um, level of thinking skills, and then you go to the higher level of thinking skills. So it starts with remembering. So what happens is that these students are trying, um, after they were in the classroom, they're trying to remember uh, specific facts. They try to understand and grasp the meaning of um, the instructions. So, for example, if we are talking about the subject of leadership and uh, we are trying to define what is leadership, and then we start talking about the different uh, styles of leadership and um, that um, concepts and the differences, uh, for example, between uh, the, the older theories versus the latest theories, or usually sometimes the, um, there is a misunderstanding uh, between the students and difficulty for them to understand um, the difference between a transformational leader and a transactional leader, for example. And when we try to simplify it and tell them that a transactional leader, um, their characteristics is more like management versus a transformational leader, their characteristics uh, um, is different and it is a leader. So um, they grapple to understand those new concepts for them if this is their first time to learn about leadership. And then uh, you try to apply it, to use this information. So for example, um, when you're giving them an activity and explaining to them and telling them, um, choose a leader that you're uh, um, uh, familiar with or uh, that you idealize, 
and then try to analyze them and uh, which style of leadership you think uh, this is the leader. Then they try to apply it on that specific leader and then analyze and start identifying uh, the relationship between those uh, um, leadership styles, the theories we're learning, and an actual leader. And then afterwards, start examine, examining the information and making judgments. And then start creating something new, uh, a new understanding. So that was the original Bloom's taxonomy. Um, we stand there in the class, we explain to them all these things, and then later on until uh, they reach the top level of the pyramid. Um, now, if we are going to look at um, the flipped Bloom's taxonomy, and this is mainly for generation uh, C, as you can see, the pyramid is upside down. So, and it's divided into three phases, as I was mentioning, before the classroom, during the classroom, after the classroom, the, if we go take it on those three steps. So before the classroom, when you are giving um, your students uh, an activity, uh, they are trying to remember what was, what did they hear, what did they read, um, did they understand it, they didn't understand it. Uh, they had questions, they need things that are fuzzy to them and not clear to be explained. And then they come to the classroom. And then while they are in the classroom, then you are giving them uh, different activities and interactions, maybe projects to work on, maybe a group uh, discussion or activities, maybe also a role play uh, to demonstrate how are they applying um, those concepts they read about and then um, analyzing everything. Then after the classroom, they sit there and start evaluate their, they have ownership of their own learning journey. And you also, as an educator, you start evaluating your teaching. So it also happened. Was it successful? Uh, did you manage to explain those concepts clearly uh, to your students? How did the students uh, interact? So you are also revisiting the tools that you have used, the tools that you have provided to your student before the classroom and checking, did it work or not? If it didn't work, then how can you enhance on it? Remember, we are reflective practitioners also. And the main aim and goal here is to actually engage our students in their uh, learning journey. Uh, to make it simple, and uh, what is flip classroom simplified, um, please look at it in three stages. Uh, before, during, and after. So before they come to the classroom, the students prepare outside of the classroom using high quality online teaching resources. Um, there is actually one thing that um, I wanted to share with you. Um, when uh, Flip Classroom first uh, came up and everybody started talking about it, at that time I was working in MIT and, and there is this kind of misconception and some of the uh, people who were not really familiar with Flip Classroom um, thought that Ooh, ooh, that's gonna be easy. Uh, let's work uh, for uh, the lecturer. We don't need to really uh, bother anymore. We can just uh, give the students things, um, just throw it on the students and let them read, give them readings at home. That, that's, that's not it. That's not the case. Actually, in, and when I go further in this presentation, there are lots of important things that needs to be done. It actually requires from us as educators um, to be more creative, um, more innovative um, in the material that we need to provide for the students. And if we're smart enough, it will be hard at the beginning, of course, but then as we go and as we get into it, 
it will become easier. And like anything, when you start a new, it's not as easy as when you practice it. Practice makes perfect, as we all know. So anyway, so that's before uh, going to the classroom. It actually depends on a high quality material that we put forth in. Um, it all depends, of course, on the subject matter. And then during uh, the classroom, the students are applying, they're practicing uh, all those concepts and they are getting one-on-one -on -one, uh, feedback from the educators. So then after um, the classroom, the students are checking on their understanding and how to extend their learning. And also us as educators, we are checking on the whole process. How did it go? Did it go smoothly? Uh, what needs to be refined in it? The, the key thing here is continuous improvement. So the, this uh, figure um, in front of you, it actually demonstrates uh, the whole model of the flipped classroom again. Um, so outside the classroom, again, um, this is different than the traditional components. Uh, it depends on us, educators. How are we going to prepare for to help the students before outside the classroom? Whether giving them videos, uh, demonstrations, handouts, tutorials, games to engage them. Uh, as we all know, gamification also, it's uh, one of the latest uh, trends to engage students uh, in education. There are lots of benefits that we are going to go through um, um, later on uh, for this uh, flipped model. And also that gives um, the opportunity in the classroom that we have more collaboration. Collaboration between the students and each other, collaboration between the students and the educators, and it also uh, helps develop lots of the skills uh, that we need to prepare those future uh, employees, um, problem solving, uh, critical thinking, uh, innovation, um, and also working in peers with each other. So the flipped classroom design, as you can see that process, um, outside the classroom, they need to remember, they need to understand, they need to apply. So we as educators need to be very careful in the selection, the selection of the content, the selection of how are we going to deliver that content. In other words, which parts are going to be used flipped and which parts are going to be discussed in the classroom or with what we're going through right now in COVID, which are going to be on a Zoom, for example, or Teams uh, on an online um, platform like that, and then create that content. And then in the class, whether it is really physically um, or it's on Zoom or on Teams or any other online platform, uh, we are going to help the students to, to analyze and to evaluate and to create. So we are coaching them as educators there and assessing uh, the learning as we go. So if we're going to look at some, some of the benefits of the classroom, uh, there may be um, lots of people who would stand there and say, uh, come on, Siham, we all know the students, they don't read. Um, they don't listen to videos, they don't prepare before coming to the class. Uh, it's true. Uh, I, I have to admit that some of the students do that. They don't want to prepare, to prepare, they don't want to put the effort, and they just want to come and attend and, I don't know, wing it, as we sometimes call it. Um, but not all the students are like that. And even if there are some of them or a big number of them, um, I believe that our role is to flip this attitude uh, and to um, explain to them the benefit of it. 
and keep on repeating, repeating and repeating until uh, the information sinks in and until we win them over. And once we win them over, um, the, the benefits, the, the sky's the limit. Uh, so let's go through some of the benefits. And I believe that if we ourselves believe in it, uh, then we will do it the best possible way we can. If you do not believe in something, you will not be able to convince the person in front of you. So if you don't have it, you can't give it. As simple as that. Um, so uh, if, for, for example, um, if you look at yourself between uh, um, buying something from a salesperson versus not buying something for another salesperson, um, I believe that the salesperson that you bought from is the person who actually tried the commodity or tried the service and was talking to you from heart. You will buy that commodity or you will use that service versus the other salesman who did not try that commodity, does not know about it and is just lip talking and lip singing to you. So you are not convinced. You are not going to do it. But if we as educators believe in the benefits and the importance of how to engage our students through flipping our classrooms, then we will definitely find a way of how to convince them to be more engaged, to be more responsible and more participating. So, when we're using uh, the uh, flipped classroom, we are actually speaking the nowadays language of the students. Um, what do I mean by that? Everybody uh, is having those uh, uh, beautiful gadgets with them. Uh, some people are glued to them and they cannot leave them. Um, and the students are like that. Um, there is also um, lots of videos all around and people communicate a lot with videos, whether it's personally or whether it's professionally. Uh, there is YouTube videos that everybody, if you want to learn anything, go on YouTube and learn about it. You want to you want to have a recipe, you want to cook something, you go there. You want to learn how to knit, you go there. You want to know how to paint, you go there. You want to know about any concept in management, you go there. So it's videos everywhere. So these students and us and everybody nowadays, that's the trend, the technology that is surrounding us. Uh, look around in your house. You're going to find yourself surrounded by technology. So when you are using um, the latest technology um, to flip your classroom, you are actually speaking the language of today. You are contemporary. You are no more traditional. So that's one benefit. Then, as we all know, we all have busy life. So some of the students may not be able to come to the classroom or may not be able to attend regularly. So when you're having those uh, resources available for them, then they can go to it whenever the time is convenient and suitable for them. That's one thing. The other thing, if you remember, when I said before, during and after the classroom, in the flipped classroom, there are students who would be struggling, for example. We all know that we are all different. That's the beauty of diversity. And also people have different learning styles and um, different speeds in comprehension. So when you have some of the students, they pick it up so quickly, while others, they need more time. They need more examples. They need different way of explanation. So that flip classroom also provides you with the opportunity to support and help those struggling students on their own suitable pace. It also helps those ones who pick up things to excel, to shine, to show their creativity and innovativeness, and how can they apply the concepts that they are learning. Also, 
And when you're having, for example, videos, the students can repeat and repeat and repeat. Stop it and rewind and stop it and rewind. So, but when you are standing in the classroom and just seeing yourself once, the student cannot do that. So that is also one of the values of technology. The other thing is that it also gives another um, a better opportunity that there is more interaction between uh, the educator and the student. Why? Because the student already read. Um, we as educators, we give more attention to actually the application and to clarify any queries for the students. And so it helps also that we would have closer relationships the students get to know us better, we get to know them better, we cater for their requirements, and we differentiate in our techniques of how to meet their different learning styles through the different activities that we prepare for them, whether uh, outside before they come to the classroom or inside the classroom. And that also helps in a better and high level of interaction between the students when they come to the classroom. So they are not busy writing notes. They already read about the concept, um, thought about it, um, tried to understand it, and then they came to the class and they are ready to interact with each other in whatever activity was organized for them by us. Now, I have talked a lot, and I believe that this is your turn to also participate and look at the impact on the class management of that concept. So if there's a possibility that you can work in groups, fair enough, if you are in the same office, but if not, and you would like to work individually, that also would be great. So I would like you, please, I've uh demonstrated to you or presented to you my belief my point of view i provided you with the list of the advantages um of that concept and it would be a good idea if you please uh, take about um 10 to 15 minutes to um, jot down a list uh, in your opinion, what are the advantages of a flipped classroom versus the disadvantages of a flipped classroom? And see how would you benefit from it? Because actually um, it differs from one uh, uh, field, perspective, uh, topic to another. Uh, is that uh, possible, please? Are we, are, are, is everybody, can you hear me? I mean, is that a possibility? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, see ya, ma'am, we can hear you. Yeah, so can we do that, please? Can we do? And then we share with me some of the participants in their point of view, uh, disadvantages and advantages of the flipped uh, classroom uh, for their own topic. Participants can uh, raise their hands or uh, they can uh, type the message. I'll read out Good or morning. Madam Mall can also. Yes. Good yes. morning. Yes. Sarwar, you audible? can ask the question. Yeah, uh, ma'am, the thing is that I believe in a uh, flip cart. Uh, I am uh, practicing, first of all, that flip cart thing, flip cart uh, uh, pedagogy. And uh, I, one of the repetitions which I found uh, is that uh, students are taking too much time for discussion and some ego issue is coming between the students group. Like I was right and he was right, somewhat like that. So this is the limitation which I got. So what you will be saying on the basis of this limitation? Have you got the oh, point? Okay. Right? Yeah, yeah, of course, of course, I understand. Okay, so um, um, I will I will try to paraphrase what you mentioned to make sure that I understood you correctly. So you you said that you do believe in the flipped classroom, but you are meeting challenges. And the challenges is that when you um, you do you give 
the students uh, videos or, uh, or activities or readings at home and then you want them to come to the class and discuss it is that correct right yes ma'am and yes. Then most and then, I'm, I'm coming from yes. i'm coming from department of management studies ma'am so it is like that uh, i am giving them most of the time case studies uh, so they can uh, you know come up with a point and they can uh, yes. go through the case study before the class itself this is one yes. thing and second thing i have used to share the links of videos okay very good so um, what is your subject matter again please uh, i was teach, uh, teaching the written analysis rated analysis and now great rated analysis okay so um rated rated yeah. <laughs> w r i t t e rated analysis techniques oh okay so and then when you put them in groups in the classroom they disagree with each other yeah most of the time yeah. they will become the point okay uh, well i believe that this and it hasn't got anything to do with flipped classroom this has to got to do with teams and how the uh, the students are working with each other um so if if i may ask you did you do a contract with the students at the beginning of your class the first class of how are you going going to manage the classroom and how is the interaction and the rules in the classroom yeah. have you yeah. done that Yes, yes, ma'am. I had mentioned this thing, and uh, I usually used to, uh, whenever I start the class, I used to put up the principle that what they are supposed to do and what they are not supposed to do. So, do you tell them that they have to respect each other's opinion? For example, I used to and say that everybody to... and everybody has the right to speak up their mind, and everybody has the right to. I mean, people um, can. disagree but that that doesn't mean that it will become an issue right yes ma'am yes ma'am so my 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 view here is that um each person can look at this the analysis and the rating from a different point of view um they can complete each other or one i'm not sure if you have a right and wrong uh, for example for us in the management field certain things there is no absolute correct and there is no absolute uh, uh, wrong but there is a way of how you justify your answer how you explain it and how you convince the person in front of you do you have an absolute right and wrong in your field Ma'am, I am from Department of Management Studies only. We don't have any absolute one. I am uh, with this opinion that there will be no absolute answer for a particular case study. There will be Very different good. answers. But but the Very thing is good. that, ma'am, most of the time, you know, students' internal interpersonal issues comes and they they are you know they are come up with a uh, uh, not cordial talk, but it's come they come up with a you know different thing. Yeah, I understand what you mean. but but that issue is not to do with the flipped classroom that is to do with how you're managing your class and how the students are interacting with each other so my suggestion my my humble suggestion of course to you uh, is that at the beginning that we need to do ice breaker and we need to make sure that the students gel with each other and the ones who work with each other do not get into arguments they treat each other with respect oh, you, you know what i mean yeah yeah i got your so, point yeah. point yeah so what happens is that of course you are always going to have some students who for whatever some reason as you said personal issues they may not agree with each other and what yeah. happens is as i don't know facilitators and managing our class them we make sure that if this happens once that those students do not work in a, in the same group the next time if it's personal okay ma'am and the other thing that i always do at the beginning of the class is that when i meet them the first time ever in the semester um we do two different things which is ground rules ground rules for the classroom where 
they have to, uh, and I write it on uh, a big sheet of flipboard, and I save it, and each time it comes, that is different than the specific lessons. Uh, where, what do they expect from me as an educator for the rest of that semester, and what I expect from them? And um, some of those ground rules is that we all respect each other's opinion. There is no put downs and no use of bad language and things like that. OK, OK, uh, well, it, I will. Uh, it, yes? Uh, yeah, I, I really uh, appreciate the way you have answered that. And the ground rules, I will be, uh, I always clear with this by uh, students that we are in learning age. So it's not like that I am a very big learner or you're, a, you're not a learner. We both should learn and we should come up and come up with a difference of opinion. No doubt. Out, the knowledge which we are getting, it's, it will be definitely benefit us. Okay. I hope I managed to um, help with uh, some tools um, for you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your answer, ma'am. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Amin. Thanks. Okay. Um... Anybody else, please, would like to share um, any of the disadvantages or advantages in their own opinion about flipped classroom? Participants can ask the questions directly. I would also request participants to please keep their cameras on so that uh, ma'am can see you and uh, it should be uh, it will be an active uh, interactive session. Ma'am, I am keeping my camera off because of uh, some network issues here. Okay. Today, I, I am facing problem with the network issues. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, uh, participants are requested to keep the cameras on and uh, have an interactive session. Then only we, you will be able to learn something. You know, I'm, I'm a believer that, yes. I think yes. nobody is having any question, so okay. we can the, proceed. Okay, the, the, the thing is that uh, I believe that we all have different points of view. And um, it we all also learn from each other. And one of the important and the great things is that as educators, when we share our stories with each other. Um, so if somebody um, already um, used a flipped classroom, can you please tell me what were this, in your opinion, what are the disadvantages? I mean, I shared with you what some of my colleagues thought at the beginning. Whoa, that is going to be very easy. Ah, we're just going to give the students something to read. Go and read before you come to class. But trust me, if you do not, if, if you don't put a, a good activity for them to prepare before class, um, it's not going to uh, be well when they come to class. And the other thing is that some of my colleagues also complain that the students do not read. They do not read, they do not listen. But if we tailor our activities in the classroom around what they read, that will force the students that if they came the first time and they didn't read, the next time they will have to read because they will feel left out. They will feel that they can't participate because they don't have in, a good information about the subject matter. Would you agree with me about that? Totally agree Hi, with you, ma'am. This is Ifra here. Yes. Uh, yes. Hi. Uh, yeah, I, am, I was using the flip classroom in my class. So what happens is, so when we are uh, uh, Engaging the students when we are informing the students to go through the contents and then uh, come back to the next class. So uh, out of the hundred, uh, out of the students, the twenty-five percent or thirty percent, they will they will do their homework and then they will come back. Whereas this uh, sixty-five or seventy percent students, they won't do the con uh, their homework. Yeah. So yeah. and then the next day, as per our plan, we have we will be going moving ahead and then we will be asking started asking the questions regarding the uh, the contents which you have given. So but as this most of the students they have not uh, done their homework, 
so they can't be able to answer that and then uh, those students who have also done their homework they won't open their mouth because uh, most of the students they didn't do their uh, homework part and then they don't want to uh, disgrace them that is what in my class happened they told that so, the other students uh, they didn't do their homework part uh, so you just postpone the class to the next so uh, whatever the plan the planning is happened in the class so it will be just postponing it it happens like two or three eyes uh, in my class so uh, my the schedule for the planning for the classes it was little bit uh, on the confusion mode and then uh, we have to go ahead and then move ahead and then we have to take uh, some other topic for the class so any other solution so where we can motivate the students like uh, yes participate yes yes um so may I ask you said do you have 100 students in your class and i'm just saying the percentage not 100 so students how many so how many students do you have in your class 60 70 students are there yes yes that's a big uh, class number okay you see the things is that when um one of the things that i'll discuss is that we have to also be flexible okay so we have to, uh, it is, um, let me give you a, 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 an example. You, we know mothers, for example, complain that their kids do not like to uh, eat vegetables. So sometimes they hide the vegetables within little things and they give it to them, right? Right? Yeah. Yes, well, yeah. yes, well. yeah. So what we need to do is that we need to, and then just drag them little bit by little bit. And how can you do that? You make activities fun. You 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 put it as if it's a game. And if they didn't, okay, they did not read. They come to you and they didn't do it. You do it in the classroom. So that you so you encourage them. So for example, they didn't look at the video. Okay. So what happens is that do the video in the classroom. They haven't done it. Put the video in the classroom and then start asking the questions, start engaging them. Because maybe they, they, they didn't look at it at home, they don't know what's the content. So if they taste it, you know, people when they don't taste anything and they don't know how sweet or how nice, they don't wanna try it. But give them the taster and the trial in the class to just drag them drive them towards you and they don't explain to them explain to them that you are doing this this is what they're going to benefit out of it and you don't get phased out you persist and insist do not give up please uh, what yes, can we do we uh, have to we have to keep yes Yes, what if the students take it as granted? Like I already know. I did like this, uh, whatever the homework I have given. So no, no, I have change. Given. change. No, every time change, change. And put a carrot. If you do this, I will do that. If you do this, I will take you out. If you do this, I will give you that. Sorry, bribe them. It's with, do whatever. I'm going to take you out, finish this and I'll take you out. Do this and I'll do that. I do this to my students. They're like little kids. We are like little kids. All of us. We act like that. We act up. Um, find out because you see, there are different learning. And trust me, if a group of them sees uh, some of them having fun and enjoying it, they will get jealous and they want to enjoy it too. That's human nature. So um, some of them, for example, like role playing, they become competitive and competitive to excel, competitive to do better. So if this exercise and activity did not work out, change it. Next time, do something else. Next time, do something else. Never repeat yourself. That is the key thing of flipped classroom. You have to be innovative in the way you give the material. Uh, role plays. Then I found out that some of my students they get scared. 
uh, and they, they don't want to do it. But once they get into it, we have to keep on motivating them. Once they get into it, they will like it and they will do it. Um, make it something personal to them. Talk to them, ask them. What is it that they like? And oh, the key thing is that, who are the influencers in your class? That's another thing, power. Power is very important. Who are the key personalities in the classroom that of the rest and they follow them. You go to those key students, you take them to your side, you win them, then their job is to win the rest for you. Yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am, I got it. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Yes, well, I got we, it, I got we, it. We have, yeah, we have to keep on trying. Yeah, uh, I know it's not easy, but we have to keep on. We cannot give up. Right? Yeah. That is it. Yeah. Thank you so well, much. Well, I'd be, I'd be really interested to know what you have done with your class after that. Okay. Is there anybody else who would like to share? No? Okay, let's move to the next. Uh, do you still have my uh, screen or uh, no, you don't? Yeah, it's visible, ma'am. Your screen is visible. No. Your my PowerPoint, do you still have yeah, my yeah, PowerPoint? PowerPoint is visible. Now I can see the discussion okay. impact on class management. Okay, so um, let us move to the next one. Okay. Uh, the next one is that, so actually from what you mentioned, what I've noticed is that uh, most, this is just a question for you. Do you yourself believe that a flipped classroom has got, uh, is valuable? Yes, ma'am, it is more valuable. But as an educator, is it time consuming for you? Uh, uh, once in the beginning it is a uh, time consuming so once if we are done with this uh, and then afterwards when we are used to with that so it's very easy for us to manage with our flip classroom because uh, whatever the concepts we are trying to explain in the class so it will make us job very easy for the students if they are having the uh, basic knowledge already outside the classroom so what kind of material do you provide for them, please, outside the classroom before they come? Uh, according to the concept wise, so if any uh, uh, videos are available, then I used to provide the link for the videos. And then otherwise, I used to make uh, some PPT and then I used to provide the notes as well. If it is a little bit of uh, concept wise, where they have Hello. to just read one or two sentences. Oh, okay. So, so you, you have, have, oh, okay, okay, okay. have you done your own videos? I have you, done my own videos, ma'am. Oh, okay. I have done my own videos and I share my videos before going to the class. One day before I share. One day uh, only? One or two days before, depending on if it's a weekend, I'll share it two days before. Because okay. even if I give too early also, they don't uh, watch and come. They don't watch. Mm. Okay. Uh, yeah, we see this, that issue. I mean, it's a, I think it's a global thing uh, that all of us educators complain about that the students don't read, don't this, don't that. Uh, I am the kind of person who keeps on uh, emailing them and I, keep, and I also phone them. For my students, I email them and I phone them. And um, yes, there are some of them who do it and some of them who don't. And it's the same thing, it's a global thing. But I believe if we have few of them that would enjoy it and demonstrate how fun it is, that may win others. So um, yeah. Okay, let's uh, move to the other um, point that I wanted to, thank you very much. 
uh, for sharing your point of views. As I can see that you're all passionate about it and you believe in it, but unfortunately, the main thing uh, that is advantage that lots of people um, are mentioning that I hear is that uh, the lack of engagement of students before they come to the classroom, which, which means we have to work on that. And I believe it's diversifying uh, the activities and uh, motivating them. So there is uh, done uh, in 19, um, sorry, in 2014, developed a six step guide to flipping the classroom. And uh, he believed that this will help. And um, from the two or three people that I talked with, I believe that that's what you are following. So the first thing uh, that Dunn said is that planning. Planning is actually an extremely important thing. So um, if you, that's my personal suggestion. If you think that you cannot do all the classroom, flipped classrooms, alternate. Alternate in a way that uh, the students would not guess our next movement. You see, when we become uh, very obvious to the student, uh then they can think oh this is what uh, my lecture is going to do so they become complacent so we have to alternate and think differently um so in the planning phase you need to think carefully which of your lessons uh, that you believe uh, requires to be flipped or it will work very well or that's important um for your learning outcomes and what is your lesson plan and all these things. And you are incorporated in your plan that this is what you are going to do as a flipped classroom. And then according to whatever you decided um, for that week uh, or um, those couple of weeks, you start recording, you start doing your own videos. So sometimes the students get bored if we're all the time giving them links to YouTube. So the next time we change, we say, OK, I am going to talk to them. Or another time, you can actually go out uh, in the market. You can go out uh, in the street. You can go out anywhere and, and decide that you are going to have a live video, record something that happened, and that you think it will be more beneficial. Um, sometimes I used to use a lot of uh, clips from movies. You see, uh, everybody likes to watch movies. Um, so you can choose certain clips. And in these cases, perhaps you need the help of your IT uh, department. Uh, if you are not a, um, a highly IT savvy person and you need the help of uh, your IT department to help you in making those uh, videos more engaging. If one student watch it, they'll go and tell the others. And I believe that you also know that students talk. They talk among each other. Um, I'll give an example. These days, um, I am uh, teaching uh, a different, uh, in a different totally new concept uh, in the um, social services department. And uh, it's a certificate and it has got different uh, modules. A few weeks ago, I was in the class and we were talking about one of their assessments and the requirements. And uh, it was to talk about the uh, Kumi Kumi, which is the Maori word for a conflict resolution. How to resolve conflicts and how you first identify it and of course, what are the required skills other than the model uh, for conflict management and conflict resolution? You also require to support it with tools. The tools are your skills, how to solve it. So we were sitting in the classroom and I, their assessment, they have to choose an organization and choose um, a conflict, an actual conflict. And of course, the definition of what is a conflict, the disagreement between two entities. So they need to identify who are the two entities, what is the conflict, in order to choose 
the added strategy to resolve this conflict and what are the uh, tools, the skills. And we were sitting and talking and then one of the students, and we're talking about the deadline, one of the students stood there and she said about one of my colleagues, another lecture in that classroom, see him, why are you rushing us? The other class, they did not even finish their other module. We are in module five now. And she was saying that the other class, they did not do the role play, which is one of the assignments for the module four. And they are comparing me with the other lecturer. How did you know that? Oh, he's got a friend in the other classroom. And today they are not talking, they are not having the same lesson we are having. They are still doing presentations for the role play of the old module. It's, you see, it's really shocking that they're standing there. They, they got out of the main lesson that we are in and the main discussion, and they're talking about another lecture that's happening with my colleague and that they didn't finish and, oh, we're ahead and we shouldn't. We don't want to work. That's it. That's the story. They don't want to work. So I stood there and I said, well, I'm sorry. I cannot compare myself with somebody else and I don't know what's going on in the class. And it's not my business. What, what I'm telling you here is that we have this uh, thing to do and we have to do it. Why are we comparing ourselves to others? Let us concentrate on the job on end. And I want to do my work properly and please, you also need to support me in that. We have deadlines, we have moderations. You have to submit your assignment on time. Students talk. They talk with each other. They look at what is this lecture doing or what is that. And this is also teaches us as educators that we have to be um, in synergy with each other and collaborate with each other, talk with each other so that the students will not come and do that to us. So it is extremely important um, to be a standardized too, or else we're opening ourselves for their attacks. So anyway, so sharing, sharing is, is also very important. So after you plan, you record, and then you share it with the students and if each time we try to diversify and differentiate and, and give them different activities, uh, we are not, uh, we're trying to minimize from boredom. And we are trying to minimize from them also um, the, um, getting complacent or getting bored and it's the same thing, it's the same thing. And catering for their different learning styles. Some people like to learn by reading, some people by listening and watching videos, some people by writing. So when we give them different and prepare for them different activities, it actually um, helps them um, to learn according to their own requirements at their own pace. Okay. So then uh, the next uh, step is change. So the, as I was mentioned, is that the lessons have to be different and depending on the depth also of the subject matter. And then the fifth step is the group. Um, working in groups, as we know, it has got is, its own dynamics, its own techniques, and we have to help them work together. Um, from experience, I find out that some activities individually, when the um, students are reflecting about their own experiences, it's very good to do it like that. And some activities like role plays, they, they love it. They get engaged in it and they work uh, very well in synergy in groups. And then it's very important that we also reflect uh, what went well, which stage went well versus which stage did not go well 
and then how do we actually uh, refine it, regroup, uh, redo it again? So we have to keep on reviewing and revising as we go each time. And by the way, each group is different. So in this semester, you may meet some students, some technique becomes very popular and works for them. But if you come in the next one, it may not be the same. But so it's always changing and uh, to the different tones and the different needs of the different uh, levels of students. So I want you please, um, I'll have to um, uh, change the activity and ask you, uh, who practiced those six steps? And what was the classroom that you used those steps? Was it successful or not successful for you? Now it's your turn to talk, please. Have you used DUNS six steps when you were preparing and planning for your flipped classroom? Uh, sir, Ibrahim, sir, you're on mute, sir. I'm in mute? No, no, ma'am. Uh, uh, the participants, uh, those who want to ask the question, they are on mute. Ibrahim, sir, you are on mute. Yeah. Oh, okay. somebody's Ifra, to Ifra, can you unmute the participant? Uh, ma'am, they can unmute, ma'am. Already I have given the access. If okay, can participants can unmute, can unmute themselves and speak. ये सब में ये क्यों हो रहा है एचएल फैकल्टी मोहम्मद जमशेद में भी रिकॉर्डिंग आ रहा है एक्सक्यूज मी मैम सी सी हां मैम यस सी हां मैम यू टॉक अबाउट द बेसिक प्रिंसिपल व्हिच वी आर सपोज्ड टू फॉलो फॉर फ्लिपकार्ट प्रो इट्स फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल शेयरिंग द नोट्स वीडियो और द थिंग्स व्हिच इज रिलेटेड टू द सब्जेक्ट सेकंड रिगार्ड्स टू द presentation third that how it will going to happen so the basic instruction at the time of class it has been given to all of these students on the very first class ma'am yes is that a question no ma'am it's like that you asked that uh, uh, whether we have followed okay, the uh, what I, yeah what i am asking is that have you followed done the six steps that i just referred to and how it worked for you what were the steps that worked for you what were the steps that didn't work for you how did you deal with it ma'am the uh, things the steps which has taken it was in proper order it was working unless uh, 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 unless the students themselves uh, like few of the uh, were not prepared so i asked them that they should prepare in the class itself this is the alternate which i got who were not prepared i asked them to prepare them in the class and third thing is that their personal uh, relation interpersonal relation was a uh, very uh, was has become problematic you know ego issue so it's like that i had told you already that it i found it yes. is the limitation of flip card room okay ma'am how you, ma many how many students are in your classroom please 60 60 that's you have big yeah you have big classroom yes okay yeah thank you ma'am thank you thank you very much is there anybody else who would like to share please So when you are not sharing, does this mean you are using it or not using it? No? No? <laughs> uh, Ma'am, this is Zufra here again. <laughs> Hi. Yes, I have already. Yes, yes, sir. Hi, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, for me, the thing is, uh, uh, the steps, it is working, but actual from the evaluation point of view, I couldn't judge whether uh, I have completed the flipped classroom or not. So, like uh, some of the students, they were not uh, 
uh, done their homework part and in some of the students they have done their homework part so on what basis i have to evaluate like uh, it's a flip classroom or not because uh, in one my in one of my class what happens i have given the topic and then i have given the videos to them to go through that and then to come back to the next class so it was uh, only the small topic where in my class around the 70 students so out of that 25 students they have completed that video part and then they have seen that video and then they came, they came back to the class whereas the rest of the students they were not ready <coughs> with the video content so i uh, what i did is i have asked them to look at the video in my class so i made them to look at the video so on what basis i can judge that whether i have done the flip classroom or not that is what yes. the, my question is how can we yeah it? yeah it is very very difficult when half of them do it and half of them, you've done it they think is not there. you're not evaluating if you have done the flip classroom or not you have done the flip class uh, the question is uh which of the steps worked for you and which did not work so obviously there are some of them that uh they don't get engaged or they don't want to get engaged so did you try again the next time and still the next time they did not get engaged yes ma'am next time as well So next well. time, what the so, yeah? Next time, what the students have done? I have just given some gap, and then I have asked them uh, because uh, I don't want to uh, persist them each and every day. So what I did uh, once, if I try in one week, I will just try in the next week because the students uh, they may be having a relaxation, and then they will by the next week uh, the students can participate. like that i have given the gap so that is what uh, what i am thinking is that is what the mistake i made so because earlier as you said as you told that uh, we have to be persistent and then we have to be continuously trying on so what i did is i was uh, trying in one week and then if it is not working i was just trying for the next week um thank you for sharing and saying that but i i would like to 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 mention something please don't say this is my mistake because uh, we all learn as educators also we're learning we're learning from our students how to be the best in our profession so it's not a matter of mistake here it's a matter of you're trying to engage them and it takes two to tango if you do like that with one hand you cannot clap you need the two hands to clap so you need also the support of the students so you cannot do it all by yourself you need them to to work with you so that it is for them after all what we are aiming here is to help them with their uh, education so they have to have some ownership too for it we try our best but they also need to have some ownership right So yes, yes, yeah yeah it's not easy i i know that it is not thank you thank you very much is there anybody else who would like to share uh, there are lots of uh, no no sharing today okay let's move I have to the next one hello yes yes i have a suggestion at this point actually when we ask them to watch the video and come back uh, it's better that we evaluate in the class when we discuss we, when we say that when we we ask questions and some marks will be awarded for it then they'll come prepared if we just ask them to come prepared and we'll discuss i think they'll take it very lightly yes i agree with you about the rewards and this is one of the point it is uh, uh, i believe in the carrot you know you know the concept of stick or carrot I believe in the carrot, not the stick. I believe in the carrot. So mm. I, I'll tell you um, uh, some of the things that I sometimes do is that. Um, and this one, you can do it in the class to encourage them and build the momentum and the motivation. Then next time, when you give them something at home, they will be encouraged to do it and come back. Yeah. 
I used to go and buy, you know, the big, huge Wepiker or uh, a Cadbury chocolate? Oh. Okay, the chocolates. I get and I put them in groups. And what I do is that. Uh, because also, I make them, when I'm teaching them also, how to self-evaluate and peer evaluation. And I put them in groups in the classroom and I give them an activity or a role play that they do. And I put on the board a list of criteria that they will um, give ranks to each other. A wing team, we get a chocolate, you see? So the next time somebody else, I want to take the chocolate. I want to win. I want the chocolate. I do that. And we have here in New Zealand, what do you call it? Uh, a chocolate fish, which is, uh, it's like a marshmallow covered with chocolate. You get the bag and you distribute it to them. There are lots of people who love, you know, the little star, when we were little kids, the gold star, yeah, the yeah, red yeah, star, yeah, the green yeah. star, just even the little star, they love it. And they start competing with each other. Oh, I want to win. Oh, I want this and I want that. It really, really motivates them. And next time, oh, who's going to take the chocolate? So you can do this as an example in the class. So then they get excited. So next time you let them do it at home and prepare and meet with each other. And you see, when you come to the class, it will give you five minutes or 10 minutes to organize among your team. And then you will stand and give your presentation or you will stand and do the role play. So they interact and they work with each other. So it motivates them. And sometimes I tell them, okay, if you do this very well and we finish it, we will go out. We will go out and, and have lunch outside. You know, you change the setting of the classroom itself. Yeah, it makes a difference because, uh, by the way, students get bored. Yeah, they, they are like us, we get bored. They also get bored. So you change things for them. Make it a game. Let them jump and fun and run and play. That's my personal experience anyway. It, it works sometimes and you're not, you're not going to get 100% all the time. But it wins sometimes. And we enjoy it also with them. And when we're enjoying it, they will enjoy it. Everybody enjoys. Thank you for sharing. Thanks, Anybody Mariah. else? No? Okay, let's move to the next point. Okay. So, uh, we, we have been talking about flipped classroom. So there is also the concept of flipped learning. And for us, leaders, we need leaders in our educational field. We need to distinguish between a flipped classroom and a flipped learning. So these terms are not interchangeable, by the way. So in the flipping a class, you can do that. As you, all, you have all seen and you demonstrated actually that you are doing flipped classroom. But that does not mean that automatically a flipped classroom is going to lead to flipped learning. Many of us may already flip our classroom as um, thank you very, one, uh, very much for the ones who shared that they have been flipping their classes. But in order for the students to get ready and read outside the class or watch these videos or solve additional problems, they need to get engaged in flipped learning. And that is the key. And this is what I heard from all of you. These students are not engaged in this flipped learning. In order to engage the students in flipped learning, there are four pillars four pillars in that practice. Let's have a look at them. So if you're going to look at the basis, it is the pillars of flipped learning. Flip is 
flexible environment, learning culture, intentional content, and professional educators. And the goal, the top there is student engagement in flipped learning. So let's go through that. So when we are talking about um, flexible environment, you are allowing actually a variety of learning modes as I have been um, answering some of your questions and giving you examples. So you can either physically rearrange the classroom. Uh, the layout of the classroom is different, different uh, space. And it depends on what you are doing. And that will support the students in their learning. So let me give you examples. What do I need, mean by that? So sometimes in one of the courses that I um, used to teach, it was um, uh, about, uh, they were all professional, um, professionals in the medical field. So it was a diploma in health services management. And there are lots of concepts in management that they need to apply in the health setting. And we used to uh, do a lot of role playing. So the whole classroom would be changed and it would be set up like this is a hospital or this is a clinic or this is this or this is that. We changed it. In other situations, we would actually go outside the classroom. We would have field trips. Uh, we would uh, visit different organizations. When I taught organizational management um, and uh, operation management, sorry, we need to go to have visits to organizations, look at what is the operation there from A to Z, from the minute you walk in and you walk out. Um, once we went, uh, for example, and visited Coca-Cola and we looked at their production lines and how they are doing it and look at things actually, because there is flexibility there. You're engaging the students. Uh, the organization of the whole event or, or the whole class, it's in the class time. Uh, how are we going to go there physically? Uh, what kind of transport and where are we going to meet? And somebody from uh, the organization will give uh, um, uh, a briefing and then we go every single phase and look at things and how it's actually being done. Uh, one time we went to even post in Z, New Zealand and we looked at how they dealt with the post, all the operations, how it's going, how it's happening. In another learning space that weekend, I was working. And as I mentioned to you, the topic that we were discussing was to do with um, uh, your skills and capabilities. So what we, what we asked the students, go to the market. We were teaching not in the classroom, we were teaching in the Marai. The Marai is the uh, house that is well known for the Maoris. And the whole setting is different. People are sitting on the floor and lying down and just relaxing, doing whatever and talking. And then um, we finished the discussion. Come on, everybody go to the market. Go and observe. This is um, the Saturday market. So they went to the market. We want you to look at the people and observe them and come up what type of conflicts that you have seen and what kind of skills you can utilize in order to uh, resolve this conflict. So they already got the concepts, they already listened to the videos, had the discussions, had the talks, everything. And now we want them to apply, go to the market. And then you have to come back and give them a flip chart and they have to draw and express themselves through this drawing or whatever they want to demonstrate and stand there as a group present and even though it's the same activity each group presented differently they noticed something different they talked about maybe similar or different um, skills required to resolve the, these conflicts and they viewed it from a different point of view um, somebody was talking about some religious man was standing there and preaching another one were talking about the conflict between the buyer and the seller it's, it was different and they got engaged and they enjoyed it. So you can teach outside the classroom. 
Um, one time I took the students out in, in, in the middle of the buildings, uh, the courtyard. And we were sitting there, it was a sunny day and beautiful, not raining. We're always having rain here. So they were sat out there and started talking and engaging, just sometimes changing the atmosphere, showing them that there is flexibility, that they are not confined. So when you diversify like that, um, that actually helps them in the learning. It shows them that we are also flexible in our expectations from them. And uh, it depends also on how flexible you are in your assessment. I know that we have deadlines and we have to mark and we have to submit in time and we have moderation and, and we have uh, people coming from outside and, and moderating our work but we need also to uh, provide flexibility and flexible environment for our students to learn. That's one pillar. The second pillar is actually the culture. We talk a lot about culture, the learning culture. And I started today by um, attracting your attention about the differences between that traditional uh, teaching culture and how it was centered on passive students and that we as teachers are the focus uh, and the primary source of information. So at that time, the students would linger to every word from us and believe that we are the only ones who have all the information. But right now, that's not true. Uh, if somebody comes and asks me, um, I am not a Maori, for example. I'm not a Maori person, which is the indigenous people here in New Zealand. I'm not Maori. Um, I, I, um, I am originally from Egypt, so I cannot stand there and claim if somebody asks me about things about the Maoris that I know it. I have to be honest with myself and with them and say, I'm sorry, I don't know. I will check and come back to you. Or I would go to another colleague who is Maori and would better do it. Or I can get a guest speaker who is maybe specialized in that point that I'm not. So we are no more the source of all the information. We are not be it all and the end of all anymore. So that also is one of the things in the learning culture is that we are open and we are honest and we share actually. And the center there is actually our students in engaging them and helping them by dedicating more time to them in the class to explore those topics, to practice them, to go deeper into them, to, to open more learning opportunities for them. So the students in such cases know that in this new learning culture, they have to own up for their learning. They also have to pursue the knowledge. They have to also search for it. They have to be interactive. They have to participate in it and to evaluate their learning and not only sit there and expect that it will be handed to them with a spoon or that we're going to open their heads and fill it with information. No, they are also responsible. That is the new learning culture that we're living in. That's the second pillar of FLIP. The third one is intentional content. And I believe from uh, the colleagues that I've heard from them is that they are tailoring their lessons in accordance to what is required. So the flip learning indicators continually, you continually think about how you can use the flip learning model because you want to help your students develop conceptual understanding as well as procedural fluency. So you are determining what you need to teach um, the versus what you want the students to explore. So there are certain points that you will stand there and explain it to them, while other points you want them to go out and research it themselves. So you can give them a question and let them go and investigate it, research it, and come back with an answer next time in your class. 
So that is extremely important so that you are maximizing the classroom time in order to make it more focused and centered on active learning strategies. And also that depends on your subject matter that you are teaching. The fourth pillar of flipped is professional educators, us. Our role is extremely important. So this flipped uh, classroom is actually more demanding on us educators than the traditional role. It is because during the classroom, we even if we give an activity to the student, we cannot sit there on our chair and do nothing. We are actually, I, what I do is that when I put them in groups, they walk around. I insist and, uh, that they change the layout of the classroom. And they have to sit around in a circle and I tell them eye contact is extremely important. When they choose, their, some of them are very lazy. They don't want to move. They don't want to move. Sometimes they don't stand up, move. Change the whole layout. You want to sit in a row. I said, how can you talk to each other? The one sitting there will not be able to hear to the one sitting there. Ah, oh, you're sitting there. Okay. So they need actually to have eye contact. They need to be talking with each other. So I insist that they sit in a circle. And then what happens is I walk around. I walk around in the classroom and listen and sometimes participate. I sit some time with this group, talk to them, see what they're doing, listen to them and move around. It gives me an opportunity to understand them better and to see um, the depth of their discussion uh, in the classroom, okay? So uh, these were the four uh, pillars of flipped classroom as we can see we also play an extremely important role in it. So uh, there is a sheet that you are going to uh, see it in the next one, uh, this one here. So I would like you please uh, to make a tick if you are applying that activity. And if you're not applying it, put a cross. And then uh, please count the number of ticks and the number of crosses and see which one is more. And what does this numbers indicate for you? Okay. And what does the number of crosses indicate for you? And how is this going to help you in future to plan for applying a uh, flipped classroom uh, in your classes? Here is this. So I'm just going to give you a few minutes, please, to look at that list and take the ones you're using I'm, versus uh, the ones you're not. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but your screen is not visible for us. Really? OK, I will. Uh, how come? OK, I'll go and see again, share. I asked before and I was told it is. My apologies for that. Uh, no, ma'am, uh, just now, I think uh, before few minutes only, it got disconnected. And uh, now we are able to see. OK, so can you see that now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, so if you can kindly please make a tick for the ones that you are using and a cross for the ones you are not using and calculate the numbers. Um, I need to enlarge it. Yes. Can you see that? Why is, is somebody playing in it? Is somebody playing in it? Oh, it's moving. It keeps on moving. Okay. Yeah, this sounds better. This seems better. Okay, fine. 
What is where uh, somebody is playing in the PowerPoint? Uh, no, ma'am. <laughs> I did not do that. Who is playing in the PowerPoint? Uh, ma'am, I think uh, PowerPoint is from your side, isn't it? So we can't have the control over it. Okay, I don't know why it's playing up. Here you go. My God. Something is happening to my PowerPoint here. Ma'am, we are able to see your slides. Ma'am, it's able to flip classroom. I don't know what's happening in my PowerPoint. Uh, Ma'am, you can do one thing. You can unshare and share it again. Okay. I will do that. Uh, you just have to go again to the tarot, ma'am. I'm trying. If the, my my computer has gone crazy. Or otherwise, uh, you can leave and join again. Uh, it's the I don't know. The slides are going crazy. Uh, you'll have to unshare it, ma'am. Yeah, I'm trying. The it keeps on jumping away. It's jumping away from me. Mm. I don't know what's happening. Yeah. I don't know what's uh, happening. Uh, otherwise, uh, yeah, 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 you can cancel it now, ma'am. I mean, uh, do not save and come out, ma'am. Okay, I'm, uh, I'm, I've. Okay, uh, now you go to that arrow again, it will unshare that. Uh, so we're done. Now you share it again, ma'am. Okay. I have to open it because it's gone. Ooh, yeah, you will have to, yeah, you will have to open it again. Yes, I'll have to open it. I'm not sure what's happening. It's going crazy. <laughs> so it happens morning. We had uh, some technical issues. We were uh, breaking what again happened? and again. Yeah, what happened to this? It's going crazy. The 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 cursor is just not not listening to me, not obeying me. Okay, uh, ma'am, in that case, you do one thing, you just uh, leave and come back again, join us again. I am actually, I'm using my fingers because my screen is also, you can use your fingers. The, the, the thing is not working. I'm using my fingers. Let us see if it's going to work now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, it's very weird. Wow, why, why is this happening? Uh, actually, no, we are I'm not able to here. see your okay. screen and neither we will be able to do something from here. here. So uh, you want me to, to go out and come back? OK, I'll do that. Uh, you can try that, ma'am. You can leave the session and come back again. OK. I'll do that. The restart my guy, everything is sign out already. Ganta Gurandra and I could have said. Thunder, okay, Puch. Okay, lab got it on the thing. Hello, hello. Madam Logo, you can hang over here. Ma'am, if you can hear me.
अभी गई नहीं आ यस मैम आई थिंक यू हैव साइन आउट नाउ यू कैन कम बैक अगेन ओके 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 फाइन मैम Yeah. Participants has requested to stay with us. Ma'am will be joining in uh, two three minutes. She has started her uh, computer, restarted her computer. I get hungry. Ab mai kuch nahi karte. देखो अभी मैंने बोला कि स्पीकर बाय द टाइम कैन बाय रिक्वेस्ट द पार्टिसिपेंट टू प्लीज स्विच ऑन देयर कैमरास बाय द टाइम सीएम मैडम इज जॉइनिंग बैक अगेन प्लीज स्विच ऑन योर कैमरा only anuradha madam see oh munmun sir good morning sir as uh, up mute good please morning, good morning madam morning sir oh arpita ma'am also right ma'am how is the session sir it's nice madam CM ma'am got disconnected she has restarted her computer so it will take 5 10 minutes to come back uh, again since morning we are having small small <laughs> problems arpita ma'am ready ekdam मैम का भी अपना नहीं प्रॉब्लम है ना मैम यू आर ऑन म्यूट मैम यूर अर्पिता मैम यू आर ऑन म्यूट Okay. Uh, CM ma'am has joined back. Uh, CM ma'am, you are on mute, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, uh, CM ma'am, you are on mute. Yeah. Uh, can you hear us? Yeah, you can you can yes. you hear us, ma'am? Yes, yeah. I can hear. I'm trying. Yeah, you can uh, share your P you can share your PPT again, ma'am. Can you hear me? I can hear you, ma'am. But uh, you you will have to share your PPT uh, yes, yes, PowerPoint I again. I am. I am. I am. <laughs> I am. Yeah. Here we go. Can you see it now? Yes, ma'am. You will have to. Uh, you have to play the slide, madam. Yeah, yeah. Now it's okay. Clear. Thank you. 
god no problem it happens ma'am <laughs> thank you thank you very much okay i hope everybody can see it please yeah yeah, yeah. so if you can kindly um um just go through it um uh, as quickly as possible and if you notice uh the um the abbreviations the first letters is to do with the four pillars of flip activities so the f uh, stands um for uh, each one of them the f the l the i and the p so please kindly stick or put across for the ones that you are not teaching so sorry that you are not using and uh, that will help you to see which part of the uh, pillars that you need to work on Okay. Uh, CMR? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm I'm there. I'm waiting. <laughs> I am giving them few minutes to uh, to okay. uh, tick or cross on them. participants can unmute themselves and they can ask the questions directly or you can raise the hand and ask the question or you can drop a message in uh, chat box so i hope that uh, you managed to go through all of this list because um, before i change the slide no yeah. So, the, um, can we change the um, the screen, or you're still answering, uh, looking at the, the statements, activities? How's everybody going? Do you still need the screen, or you have um, you finished ticking the activities? And we can go ahead, I think. Okay. So once you have done this, that will help you, as I mentioned to you, in order to reflect in your classroom activities according to these uh, three pillars. So uh, I want to hear from you, please, because sometimes we need to reflect on our actions. How beneficial you think this activity is for you? And will that help you in your future plans to implement those four pillars in your flipped learning environment? Any answers, any sharing happening, please? <clears throat> Please, we are differentiating now between flipped classroom and flipped learning. And how do we incorporate, how do we help the flipped learning to happen through those four pillars? Anybody would like to share, please?
Is there anybody who would like to share? No? No takers? Okay. Okay, nobody wants to share, no hands up, nothing. Can you hear me at least? Participants are requested to please respond. Nobody, <laughs> nobody wants. Okay, well. Uh, no, many of them are online, ma'am. Uh, many of them are listening to you, but I don't know why they are not uh, responding to that. They are doing, they are acting like our students. <laughs> That's it. This is, you are acting like our students. You <laughs> complain that the students do not participate. You mm. complain that the students do not engage. Well, we have to be their model. We have to participate. If you want to do any change in this world, you have to start with yourself. Want your students to get engaged, you need to get engaged with each other. Look at the last, you can look at the last in the list. What does it say? I collaborate and reflect with other educators and take responsibility for transforming my practice. That's a very important statement. Remember, the P stands for us for our uh, professionalism, for our practice as no, educators. And how important we, we collaborate and reflect, we share with each other. Do you know that in one, uh, in one of the institutes that I worked in, we used to have gatherings every Friday, the staff, for at least one hour. And we sit there and we talk with each other about what happened in the week. And we discuss if we had any challenges with the student. And um, um, she, more than one head helps. So different uh, lectures would say what the students did, how did they deal with it. Somebody else is having similar challenge. Uh, maybe a colleague will give them a technique that work with them. They practice it. They try it. it it's important that share with each other. And please share with me. Right? No? Nobody wants to share, share anything with you. Nobody. Right? I mean, if we don't do it ourselves. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I am moving on. This is actually the, uh, this is one of the things that we have to ask ourselves about four signs that we are really doing a flip classroom. So it is very important, as I mentioned, as you, you yourself explained to me about your challenges. You are recording, you are doing lectures, you are giving them uh, uh, activities to do at home and, and all these things in order to do the flipped classroom. But this also depends on us. It depends on us and how we actually um, talk to our students, how we motivate them. I, the, the constant message that I heard today from um, several of my colleagues in this field is that they need to engage the students more. So you need to ask yourself is that what are the signs and that you are really doing a flipped classroom? We can go sometimes through the motions. We can believe that we are doing it, but sometimes we're not. I've explained also the differences between the terminology of flipped classroom and a flipped learning. So the first thing that we need to look at is that students get hand on. So we need to utilize the time in the classroom. Uh, we need to engage the students, make them, they have their hands on. They practice things, they do practical activities and they enjoy it. We have to enjoy it. And if they don't enjoy it, they're not gonna do it. Everybody says, what's in it for me? So the key thing is that we develop 
these activities to make them also enjoy it. There is a huge big field in gamification. It takes time that we um, transform our simple activities into games. And so that the students will get engaged and get the buy in. OK. And also, what is the other indicator that uh, you are using a flipped classroom is that the students, they like each other. They get engaged with each other. If they are engaged in petty arguments and personal vendettas and things like that, that means we are not being successful in, in really uh, providing for them the right learning culture in the classroom. So we need to check, are we providing uh, uh, the right layout, uh, the right environment, the right culture, um, the, the suitable activities, so that they like to communicate with each other, they like, they enjoy each other's time together. And you also enjoy the time with them. It will be enjoyable for everybody. Also, we need to, we know that, but we need to remind ourselves that it is all about them. It is all about engaging the students. It's all about them making active. We are there to facilitate. We are there to demonstrate these things by example. We have to practice what we're teaching. It's all about the students. The whole aim is to engage them, okay? And then the four is the fourth sign is that are they passionate about what they are learning? If they are excited about learning, if they are excited about what they are doing, that is going to be demonstrated in how they discuss the topic and when they come to class. You will find their appreciation and their application and their analysis and their creativity in everything. So I hope that those um, indicators or signs uh, can help you in order to engage your students in the classroom. Now, uh, can you please look at those four signs? And do you have any of those signs in your classroom to show that from the ones especially who shared with me about their flipped classroom? Any of those signs around you, please? Uh, Ma'am, uh, we are not uh, we are we are not displaying on the uh, screen or we are not displaying on the walls. The signs only we are giving them the instructions. Can you see my uh, Can you see my uh, screen or you cannot see it anymore? No, no, we can't see, ma'am. Okay, I will go again and share it. I'm not sure where did it go, but I will share it. Here, can you see it now? It's loading, ma'am. Yeah, now we can see it. Okay, that's good. So those are the four signs that I was discussing. And I was asking if anybody uh, having those signs that the students are practicing, engaging in the activities. The students are having um, collaboration with each other. They understand that this is all about them. And they are passionate about their learning. Any of those signs? Uh, Ma'am, you, uh, uh, from your point of view, are we, you, are, you want to know that whether we are displaying this uh, sign in the class? Yeah, no, have you noticed, have you felt have you, have you noticed any of those? And if you notice, that is going to demonstrate to you, yes, that you are, you are actually succeeding in your flipped classroom. And if not, then you, this is an indication so that you would look at it in the future. If you have any of those signs. Okay, all right. So I think I have noticed. So which, have you noticed any of them? 
uh, the students they used to engage themselves more whenever whenever it is a flip classroom and then uh, the so and the few students are very passionate about that they will learn something in their home and then they will come and then uh, uh, they will discuss in the class uh, uh, yeah. and then uh, some students sometimes they used to like it but not all the times yeah and you see when we uh, this is the, the main thing and the first point is identifying what it works and what doesn't and we are not going to get it 100% all the time but what we are aspiring there is that we also reflect as on our practice so that it didn't work this time okay then you change for the next time so you target this group because remember that these students have different capacities and levels of learning and different styles of learning so when we change every time we are trying to cater for different learning styles you see what i mean so that that's that's great and that helps us to to hone in our practices don't you think so yes ma'am yes i agree with that thank you thank you very much for sharing anybody else would like to share please now as i mentioned to you at the beginning when i was uh, uh, telling you about the content is that I usually like to end uh, any workshop with reflections. And it is, it's an important thing that we reflect on what we're doing or the workshop. So I would like you to jot down for yourselves three things that you didn't know before, uh, two things that surprised you about the topic, and one thing you want to start doing with what you have learned. And you can keep that for yourself if you want, but obviously there are some people who are not in the mood of sharing today. Okay, so three things that you didn't know before, two things that surprised you, and one thing that you want to incorporate uh, in the future. I would like um, please to end uh, with a note that Education is the kindling of a flame, not the filling of a vessel, as Socrates said. I do believe in that. I believe that uh, I am passionate uh, about uh, my students. I am passionate about their learning journey. And when I first started my career as a teacher, uh, I had the wrong idea that uh, I wanted everybody of my students to like me and I, everything will be great. And But uh, I came to know that that is impossible to happen. So I'm trying my best. I hope for the best. And to me, uh, the success of my students is my reward. So I try to take them one by one by one. And whoever succeeds at the end, that is the best award for me. Thank you very much uh, for listening. Thank you for your time. And thank you uh, for the ones who shared with me. Uh, I hope that I managed to help you in uh, um, maybe directing you to some tools uh, to help you with the challenges that we meet in the classroom. And um, it's, uh, it's a good thing that we all share and reflect on our practices together to learn from each other. Thank you, CM, ma'am. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank uh, you. Is there and, any, uh, any questions? If anybody would like to ask anything. Obviously, everything is clear like mud. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks. <laughs> I'm so grateful for this.